it's time for Talking She. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Talking Shit. And what do you know, ladies and gentlemen, from the graduating class of 2013 from El Camino Community College, the man they love to hate over there, Robert D., is with us today. Hello, Robert. Howdy. Robert is here, and what Robert and I are going to be doing is having a discussion about uh, Robert's graduation. He graduated from uh, El Camino College, finally. They are going to be saying farewell to Robert. Robert has done a plethora of community work over at the college. Um, whether or not uh, the staff over there is <laughs> happy with his staff. And we're going to be showing you some footage throughout this talk with Robert. And this talk is also going to continue on our podcast. Uh, we'll give you the podcast information uh, at the bottom of the screen uh, on this video underneath the window of the screen and we'll show you how to get on to do some podcasting uh, with Robert and I. I'm also going to be talking later with Heather and Zach and Aurelio, hopefully, in regards to some of the stuff that's been going on in the courts here lately. The courts have been very busy in our country this week. Uh, but before we get into that, Robert, Robert, Robert was asked to, what were you actually asked to do over there this year for your uh, graduation? Um, I was approached by Brianna von Stein, um, the woman that you Who? interviewed. Who? Brianna von Stein. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The she was a part of the, the, yeah. For the fair. Right. Um, and she really encouraged me to audition um, as a commencement speaker. So there was about, maybe about half a dozen or so um, students who auditioned. Most of them involved in student government. Um, and there was a panel of three judges. She was one of them. Another was um, the president of Associated Student Organization, which is like student government. And then the other was um, a veteran librarian who's also a Chicano's like rights activist. Wow. So the panel basically picks, you know, which um, individual they feel um, had the best potential speech. And then, yeah, they chose me. Well, good. And so basically you were, you gave like a, almost like a commencement speech or an end of the year kick of the president of the college ass speech. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> I, I was looking at the hard copy of your, your, your remarks and very, very proud of you to include you in on like our, you know, commentary staff here at uh, Talking Shit, uh, a part of a Black Man With Hands production company here. And looking at some of the wording uh, here um, in your speech, it's absolutely amazing. I like how you started out. Let's take a look at that. I would like to take this moment to express my gratitude and deep respect for El Camino Community College. What defines this institution in which many of us hold shared feelings of respect and gratitude? At first look, we may see newly renovated buildings which house our courses and academic endeavors, but is that what really defines El Camino College? Its aesthetic and spatial value? Is El Camino's value determined solely by our annual budget? Or is it the diversity of persons unified in common cause? Robert, yeah, so in those remarks there, I mean, I like how you stated that the definition uh, or what defines the institution over there and uh, how you try to share the same feelings that you want uh, that college over there to be something more than uh, fancy new renovated buildings. What did you, I mean, I know I kind of understand what you mean. We've talked in private, but can you explain to our audience where your head was going with that, like that comment? There's a lot of construction going on over there. There is. Um, they just got another Measure E bond, which basically, um, that's where all the money comes is like bond debts to rebuild um, the school. They're actually going to tear down that stadium too that I gave the speech in. So by next year they'll have a completely new facility. But the the idea that I was trying to convey is that you know El Camino College, you know what makes El Camino College is its teachers and its students, its staff and its faculty. That the community of El Camino College is based on you know the communal relationships you know on that campus. That that you know, is what defines El Camino, not its budget, not its buildings, not its resources necessarily, but 
you know the people. I also like yeah, and and going into the people, I like how you allude to you, the 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 developing or the development of relationships. Uh, you when you talk a little bit about. Um, uh, whether it's writing, uh, I'll read it right out of the speech, whether it be writing a letter of com- recommendation on their lunch breaks or serving as advisor of half a dozen c- clubs or taking, isn't that what, uh, what was the woman's name again? Uh, Brianna Von Stein. How do you say it? Brianna Von Stein. Von Stein. You say it too fast. I'm sorry. Not everybody talks like that <laughs> and says names like that every day. Uh, Ms. Von Stein, uh, isn't she sort of like a sponsor for certain groups? And she does a lot of like work off the clock, so to speak, that really enhances the community and not just makes those uh, buildings look shiny. She, I mean, her official position is the assistant director of student activities. So her department is responsible for um, a variety of student activities. So all clubs. Um, she, you know, is the advisor for ICC, which is Interclub Council. Um, if there's any type of events that are taking on place, she's helping facilitate those. Um, her and her supervisor, Rebecca Cobb, they just work to ensure that um, that students are getting the resources that they need and the help that they need to be able to do the things that they need to do. Yeah, that's very important. Let's take a look at that part of the speech now where Robert is making comment about uh, some, I, I consider them like sacrifices in some of the work that the staff and, 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 and whatnot and what goes on outside of just the regular our, uh, you know, status quo environment of the college itself. Let's listen to some of those comments. Our devoted faculty consistently exceeds what is expected of them to provide the resources needed by our students, whether it be writing a letter of recommendation on their lunch break, serving as the advisor of a half dozen clubs, or perhaps taking a chance by supporting student-initiated ideas. Yeah, uh, thank you, Robert, for letting us see that. And then the last part that I want to touch on before we got to go, uh, and we'll go, of course, a little longer on the podcast that I'm referring everyone to. We've also been getting a lot of hits on Twitter. I, uh, JP has been really trying to sort of give me a kindergarten walk through the whole uh, idea of tweeting and what that's about. But if you want to tweet us, just go on over there to talk and shit. Uh, and we'll have all that information on the bottom of the screen as well. Don't forget about our YouTube and our Facebook page. And we are linked to, to Robert. I think we are linked to your Facebook page, too. There's a lot of... Robert has a lot of information on his Facebook page also. Anyway, the last part of your speech, which I really loved, and it's really apropos. I mean, you talked about, you know, Nelson Mandela, who apparently had some, you know, miraculous kind of... A little bit of an improvement, but not uh, out of the critical stage of his health he's in right now. You made mention of Mandela. You made mention of the global aspect of education as far as what that entails for not just people at that college, but universally what it means to really, you know, basically give of thyself. You, uh, one of the quotes that I love, or one of the things you said that I'd like to quote is, I believe that what we do with our education is what gives it uh, societal value. Uh, can you explain, talk a little bit about that, uh, you know, the more human, what do you call it, the hum, how do you say Humanistic this? Humanistic society. Yeah. I mean, it just sounded like you was writing uh, 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 some kind of speech that they were going to give at the, you know, um, at the first uh, community college on the moon. I mean, it was just sort of a really... <laughs> well, I had a lot of help brother? from your poet on staff, Mr. Ethan Castro. Right, right. Uh, Ethan, is, uh, Ethan is everywhere. Ethan is sort of like a spirit that floats through the Asian canals of our mind. You know, he does a lot. He helped, uh, uh, what is it, Set Right? What's the name of that band? The band? Set on Right. Set on Right. He helped them write their song. <laughs> Uh, somebody else was talking about Ethan the other day, and now here you are. Did Ethan help you with this? He did. 
Wow. He kept me up until 2.30 in the morning, would not let me leave until we got it perfect. Wow. The only reason why I've never bought Ethan on camera is because he's a mute. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tell me about this part of the speech where you talked about Mandela. Well, the I guess the idea that I was trying to convey is is that in current day when we talk about education, the way that we treat education is that we think of education solely within its economic purpose. So it's based on like you know what it can do for the economy, right? And it's like I believe and I strongly believe that education has the power to transform the world right. to create a more like a society that's based on understanding of you know other people's perspectives and experiences and um i just feel like education has the power to transcend its economic purpose and you know help people be more understanding of each other um help people to not be so you know ignorant and and misunderstanding and you know help foster communication and that it would you know, education can be utilized to really kind of like address some of the societal ills that we're experiencing. I and, and and I know this is a really long stretch as far as conversing about what education can mean, but uh, we I was watching uh, part of the Trayvon Martin trials today, and one of the witnesses, a uh, very close fed friend of Trayvon Martin, was on the witness stand today, and communicatively the woman or the young girl she was 19 she was on the phone uh, during the shooting and she witnessed her, probably one of her closest friends on the planet being murdered and just the attack from the uh, attorneys from uh, the Zimmerman camp while she was on the stand because of her educational shortfalls and uh, we understand that not everybody's going to get the education that everybody else does. But in lieu of the topic, it was just sort of sad, not necessarily uh, for her defect or what she couldn't convey uh, communicatively on the stand. There was some discrepancy with her language and her speech. And what was the sad part about it, however, was uh, Attorney West, uh, Representative Mr. West, the representative uh, for Zimmerman, during the cross-examination, he sort of bumbled the overall, the picture was that there was obviously a communication gap and an educational deficiency going on there with this girl. And with his education and him being, you know, a lawyer of 30 years, could not really understand, not necessarily the fact that the girl couldn't use certain language or whatever, but the big picture or the broader uh, 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 scheme, or in the broader sense, he was not, uh, uh, he wasn't aware or available sociologically to understand his own deficiency toward hers. And it made it really sad that he was sort of almost abusing her because of the fact that there was an educational uh, lapse in something she may or may not have gone through with her way of communicating. But even him with an education was absent of the needs to really comprehend or understand when someone does fall short uh, educationally. And I know it's a stretch as far as, you know, what, what you're talking about, but I do believe you're right that if we don't understand one another's deficiencies, how can we help each other overcome them? If we're lacking the education of the uneducated, like if we're uneducated about those who are really not educated in certain areas, then how can we really be helpful without being demeaning and coming off very aggressive? He was very mm -hmm. uh, rude and, and sort of... You know, it's kind of like, why don't you get it together, dummy? It, it, it's kind of yeah, like communication is also a two-way street, right? You know what I mean. And language is just a method of, you know, getting information across. Well, she grew up in co in a crew a Creole Creole. How do you say it? Creole. Creole. Uh, her mom speaks Creole. There was some Spanish in her childhood, mm. so her, you know, um, just the, her dialect was a little hard. You know, even me from the black community, I could understand some of the slang terms she was using. But overall, I think that some professional needed to happen. Something professionally in a communicative sense should have been provided for the attorney 
to really, you know, understand this witness. Anyway, um, basically her speech ended uh, over at the college at the graduation ceremony uh, with a very beautiful crescendo ending as the president of the college was nervous as hell. Let's take a look at that <laughs> final part of the speech, shall we? Today, we celebrate their commitment to education and our accomplishments as students which define the holistic experience here at El Camino College. As we move into the next chapter of our educations, I invite you to pause and consider what gives value to the education in which you have so far received. Most of us have been taught that education will enable us to obtain better jobs and greater economic opportunities. This is true. However, I believe that what we do with our education is what gives it societal value. Once again, uh, I want to thank uh, Robert D. for coming over and chatting with me. Robert, before we go into the podcast and we end this uh, YouTube uh, episode of Talking Shit, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, the end of the speech is phenomenal, it's crescendo ending, and the wish that you uh, instilled upon your fellow graduates, uh, good luck. Um, where are you going? What are you going to be doing? El Camino is getting rid of your ass. Well, that's what they think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll still be organizing the social justice program there. Oh, wow. We'll be over there filming it. And we're actually converting um, a section of the Student Activity Center into mm. a social justice center. Mm. So it's going to be a place where students can have access to resources. Um, to help develop some of their kind of like organizing and activist skills. And we'll also be printing Robert's face on the food stamps they'll be getting out there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Go. So they think they're getting ready to move. They're not. Yeah. Um, but I will be going to Cal State Dominguez Hills, which is not too far away. Um, and I'll be working for the teachers union. Wow. Wow. That's uh, pretty, pretty remarkable. We'll have an inside scoop on anything that Robert can... As, as far as policy and, and, and legally be able to assist us on as he uh, travels on over there. be looking forward to having you uh, do more uh, work in the community. Once again, I want to congratulate you on your graduation. I think you did an excellent job over there. I know your parent, your mom and dad are proud of you, your stepfather, and it's good to have you on board here. Uh, Robert is an asset to what we're doing over here, which is trying to serve. And uh, that's all the time we have now here on YouTube with this episode of Talking Shit. I'll see you when it's time to eat. Thank you.